And when we look at the landscape, uh, in particular the cloud computing landscape, we see uh, the, at, at the top shelf of service providers, application developers, uh, and other entrepreneurs, we see a, a, an array of U.S. companies. I mean, this is a new global competitive advantage for the United States, full stop. And so from the Commerce Department perspective, the nightmare scenario is that the potential of that competitive, global competitive advantage is thwarted by a global patchwork of laws that uh, doesn't al al allow our leaders, our entrepreneurs, to achieve their full potential. Um, you know, I think Evan did a great job talking about the, the, the opportunity that the, the cloud offers. I mean, the, his company doesn't own any servers. It's an IT company. Phenomenal statement. You know, and he's able to deliver agility, cost savings, and he used the word force multiplier, you know, as something he sells to, to, to his customers. This, this is a, a U.S. phenomenon, sounding a little jingoistic perhaps, but it's another example of our country's leadership in this space. And my nightmare scenario is that if we don't p pull ourselves together as a policy community within the United States, figure out what the right recipe is here, and then work uh, deftly at um, evangelizing uh, that recipe globally, then um, what, what we've been, what we've been uh, cooking up in the back offices, you know, with our, with our, our superior uh, capabilities uh, will, will be uh, frustratingly uh, disappointing. You want to go? Yeah, I, mean, I think to echo what he's saying too. That's that's not a, it's not a hypothetical situation, and it's not something that's coming down the pipe. I mean, we started developing more and more international clients, and it's almost the first question they ask, which is, where is my data going to be stored? Is it going to be stored in the U.S.? And the, the part to me that's fascinating and a bit unexpected is that while the U.S. is the technical leader in all of this, and you know, certainly the U.S. Is, is perceived in having a very strong legal system. It's also perceived as, as a relatively risky place to be storing your data, um, which is certainly not where I think the country wants to be from a policy, mm -hmm. you know, policy standpoint, and it's certainly not where we want to be as a U.S. company in terms of being able to drive global innovation. Um, I, I think the, um, you know, the other nightmare scenario certainly that, that we have, and I think you, you spoke about competition, is that you're going to end? I mean, I, I think you are going to end up with um, a small number of very, very large global providers simply because of the, the the nature of the economics that you get you get in this business. And either ensuring that there is competition, or conversely ensuring that you know firms like mine have the ability to continue innovating as the as the marketplace consolidates around a small number of, of very, very large scale platforms um, is something that I I certainly worry a lot about. And I. And I think that's going to happen in a relatively small number of years. Again, I don't think that's a 10-year horizon. Gotcha. So, so, so my nightmare scenario, um, to, to drill down to one specific thing, I mean, I think we've, we, we've kind of heard some consensus um, um, that, that, well, we have, that there's an imbalance in privacy laws, that, that privacy laws, data protection laws in the United States are, are lower than other countries, and so we need to figure out a way to, to fix that. Well, well, one way to phrase that, go, that effort is, you know, e, you know it, it may well be a good thing to, to harmonize data privacy laws, to harmonize data protection laws, and, and from a privacy advocate's perspective, since I think, you know, it, it would always be a good thing to kind of bolster data, data privacy laws, that, that, that might well be a good thing. So, so I support the general idea of harmonization of data privacy laws, but my nightmare scenario is that as we go down the path of trying to harmonize data privacy laws, um, many, many countries around the world say, well, let's harmonize content control laws as well. Mm -hmm. and, and at the end of the day, because of our First Amendment, any harmonization of content control laws means a diminution of content protection in the United States. I mean, we are at the pinnacle 
uh, of speech protection in, in the world, um, at least certainly of major countries. Um, and so, so any move to harmonize um, that is a move, I think, away from protecting speech. So, 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 so I do think that, that, that harmonization is, is a good thing in some ways, but a risky thing in other ways. Oh, Dan? Yeah. Well, I, I just want to talk a little bit more um, about you know, how the U.S. might lose its competitiveness in cloud computing. And this is really what I meant when I talked about um, the mercantilist policies that you see in other countries. The U.S. has to be the leader in this area and say, we are going to allow our data to be stored abroad. If, if we don't say that, um, that when other countries enact those same policies, we're the ones that are going to lose out much more than any other country. And, you know, we've already seen these policies in place. L.A. County, when they moved to Google Apps, that was their requirement. They asked Google, who didn't have that before, they said, we want our data to be stored in the United States, and Google created the uh, Google government cloud that was going to be U.S.-based. Now, if any other country did that, we wouldn't be very happy about that. And we need to make sure that we're setting the right kind of standard and the right kind of leadership so we can go to other countries and say, we need to have these kind of open policies. Um, but I will push back on some of what uh, uh, John said. Uh, our, our organizations, I think, have different ideas of what is good privacy um, regulations and also how um, content should be protected. I think we, we certainly do want um, privacy protections for everybody, and I think we do want free speech. But at the same time, as we do move into the cloud, um, there is a question of if we want to protect uh, copyrighted content, who's in the best position to do this? And often it's, of course, the intermediaries, the ISPs. Um, and we, we do need to consider uh, if service providers can play a better role in protecting copyrighted content. And again, this gets back to U.S. competitiveness. You know, we have a lot of intellectual property in the United States. We care that that intellectual property is protected for us. That's generally better for the United States when that happens. So these are issues that we need to think about. Um, not just from kind of personal free speech, but also how we, um, how we act in the United States and how that affects our leadership and the ability to go out and lead on these issues internationally. 